Hello, everyone. I would like to take the opportunity and start this live lecture, if possible. My name is Barbara Depta. In a one minute, I will share more about myself and my colleague Dietrich. But first and foremost, I want to welcome you to the live lecture on nutrition for connective tissue health, where we dive really deeply into collagen and its impact on the health and strength of every layer of the body. I want to first thank you for your time and for your commitment to learn important information that can help you live a healthier life. I truly believe that very few people are aware of the interplay between connective tissue health and our overall health. Mostly, we focus on nutrition when thinking of weight loss, enhancing energy, supporting cognitive function, and very rarely do we consider every layer of our connective tissues that exist underneath the skin and support every move we make and every step we take in life. This course provides evidence-based nutrition recommendations to optimize daily performance, accelerate recovery, promote healing from an injury, and manage symptoms of connective tissue conditions that are responsive to nutrition. Today, myself and my colleague Dietrich Snyder our in-house registered dietitian and also content creator will have the pleasure to guide you and share some fascinating data throughout this lecture. But first I want to disclose uh, that I am the CEO and founder of Resync. And the reason I want to share this with you is because Resync is a company that provides people with clinically based supplements to support performance recovery and connective tissue health. My background also I would say includes being a structural balance and flexibility coach, fascia stretch specialist to many top professional athletes, especially in the NFL league and PGA, um, where I advise them on what to do and what not to do to keep connective tissue healthy. Please understand our goal today is to present you with objective data and clinical based facts without imposing any supplement products on you. You have my word. And of course, before we move forward, I want to make sure that you understand that the products and data described in this lecture are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And also, Please respect that all rights are reserved to resync and no part of this publication might be reproduced, distributed or transmitted in any form or by any means, including photocopying, recording or other electronic or mechanical methods, of course, without the prior written permission um, by resync team. So I wanna make sure that quickly I address the purpose of this lecture is to provide you a foundation education in connective tissue health, injury prevention and recovery. And it's really fundamental information that you can utilize for yourself and those in your life who you care for, or they matter to you and their connective tissue health needs attention. So they prevent all the connective tissue issues. What I want to make sure you understand this class is really not providing you with any continuing on of education uh, credits. This is not a specific advanced nutritional class for health professionals. And we will definitely not dive deep into any anatomy or physiology. So not to be concerned about this and you are not going to be quizzed about anything, but we will have an opportunity to actually address frequently asked questions. And last, I wanna make sure that you stay tuned because if you're interested in the more um, in-depth version that qualifies for registered dietitian or chiropractors continuing education, stay tuned as we will address different upcoming courses by the end of this lecture. And so the agenda is very straightforward. We'll go over different layers of the body and their common denominator, connective tissue supporting protein collagen. And then we will, like I said, address frequently asked questions. So if you look at the structure, function, and nutritional requirements of different connective tissues, what we will see and what is the common denominator is collagen. And if you are going to take one message from this lecture, 
it could be that collagen is part of every layer of your body. And the connective tissue system is made of hard skeleton and soft skeleton. And no matter which part we would dissect or look at from the most superficial skin or from the deepest bone, you can see on this slide that collagen is in every single layer of the body. Each one of them has a different maybe percentage of collagen, but it doesn't change the fact that any common connective tissue issues, anything from the most superficial like dryness or wound healing in our skin to plantar fasciitis maybe, or to muscle pull, to sprained ankle, to overused injuries from you know tears or even actually bone fractures, they are all linked to collagen and collagen is needed to expedite the healing process. I want to make sure that I emphasize the most important, I truly believe, and health professionals, many health professionals and fascia experts would agree with me, that the one connective tissue, fascia, connects, that connects and holds our the entire soft skeleton together, plays enormous role in your functional and emotional well balance, it is made 70% of collagen. And it really, we cannot talk about fascia without addressing muscles because muscles cannot function properly and not, cannot slide and contract without fascia pliability and fascia strength. And the same is with tendons and ligaments. Tendons and ligaments cannot uh, contribute to a strength and balance of your entire musculoskeletal system if you don't have a healthy fascia. And again, each one of those soft tissue components, fascia, muscle, tendons, and ligaments, again, have a common dominator, which is the collagen. That's why collagen truly matters, the health of it, the presence of it in every single layer. And I believe everyone who is present today on this lecture went through some kind of an injury that exactly involved having collagen to recover faster from the injury or surgery. And like I said, you can see the content of collagen is a little bit different, but it exists from the most superficial layer skin. Then if we go to the fascia that has actually four different layers, but overall contains 70% of collagen, then muscle tissue, 6% tendons, 85, ligaments, 70, joint cartilage and bones that are really considered exactly the heart skeleton also contain very high percentage of the collagen. And the last thing I want to state here is that bones, the 90% of the hard part of the bone is exactly 90%. And if we look, there is a 25% of the entire bone by weight has collagen content in it, okay? So again, if I want to make sure that you take one message from this entire presentation is that no matter how we dissect or look at the body from the most superficial or the deepest layer of our body, the collagen is the main and very significant essential protein that needs specific ingredients and different cofactors to stay healthy. And with that being said, I will move to the next slide and Dietrich will share with us how exactly collagen is made and why taking just plain powder of collagen or just gelatin may not be good enough. Excellent introduction, Barbara. So this is Dietrich Snyder, um, I'm a registered dietitian and education consultant. And, you know, going right on into it, if collagen is the fundamental layer uh, or the fundamental component of each layer of your body, then how are we going to support it? How are we going to um, eat in a way that supports optimal collagen health? And so in the next couple of slides, we're going to cover about uh, how we think about supporting your collagen health nutritionally. Um, we'll get into how collagen molecules are made. We'll get into what nutrients your body needs to use those collagen proteins in different tissues, depending on their structure and function. And then we're going to wrap up this section before we 
dive deep into the research surrounding collagen supplementation with um, a simple recipe that packs in as many of these nutrients as possible. So in the years of research that um, Resync and I have been doing on collagen, there are three levels to how what you eat affects this most essential protein in your tissue. You've got the, the first um, fundamental building blocks. These are the amino acids for collagen proteins. Um, you know, the distribution of these building blocks is different depending on the tissue, but essentially you have to have the uh, full spread of amino acids in order to build collagen. And then in order to strengthen it, in order to cross-link it in ways that either promote um, its resiliency or its ability to stretch, you have to have these other building blocks. So the next level that we would consider in how your nutrition affects how your collagen gets made are those supportive nutrients, those cofactors and um, supporting nutrients that allow your body to build and um, maintain your collagen. You're always breaking down and building up collagen. And uh, for that process to happen um, effectively, you've got to have these cofactors, the nutrients that plug into the enzymes and make them work in order for your collagen machinery to operate optimally. Then we get into kind of the bigger landscape, the larger antioxidant and inflammatory regulators. So, you know, this, this section covers the whole gamut of, you know, your body's pH or um, your, your weight status or the presence of a chronic condition or how many antioxidants you're eating. There's so many different things that go into how the whole process of making collagen is actually regulated. And so we've listed a number of the uh, most prominent nutrients that, that go into, you know, the building blocks, the supportive nutrients and the regulators of this whole process. But for the sake of time, we're just gonna talk about a couple of them here. So collagen peptides uh, serve as the fundamental structural building block. These provide the amino acids and the preformed peptides, which are you know, one or two or three amino acids that are already joined together um, to, that your body uses to insert into the collagen scaffolds that you have in place already. Now you see that collagen peptides are included in the building blocks, and then they're also the regulators. And so there's been really great research done in humans that shows that these collagen peptides have a, um, a unique anti-inflammatory effect on your, collagen, um, on your collagen tissues. So essentially, these different collagen peptides block the pro-inflammatory stimulus that breaks collagen down. So when you're taking a collagen supplement, a portion of those peptides get absorbed intact. They make it all the way to the uh, collagen tissues and they send a signal to that tissue to say, hey, let's stop the breakdown process here and let's initiate the building up process. So not only does collagen peptides function as a regulator, but it functions as a building block itself. So the other one I wanna talk about for the time being are the cofactor, is the cofactor vitamin C. This uh, classical antioxidant plays three different functions. It's not only an antioxidant, but it increases protein absorption in the gut, and it's the most important cofactor in the most important step of how you make collagen. So uh, we'll get into the process of how your collagen is made, but essentially in that first step, vitamin C works with iron in um, the lysine hydroxylase step that's a little more detailed than you probably care for that uh, allows the collagen protein to be synthesized itself. And so, you know, going on into the, you know, how this collagen is made, you know, we've got this complex orchestrated series. We've got amino acids that go into pro-collagen. It gets out of your cell and gets turned into like these large collagen, um, essentially ropes that form your tendons, your ligaments, your bones. But I mean, all of that detail is, it's just too much. What you're here for are the nutritional needs of this process. What are the actionable steps? What are the nutrients that you can take 
in order to support this process. And so what we've highlighted are the fact that you need you know, zinc, you need iron, vitamin C, oxygenation, and all these other um, cofactors, supportive nutrients, regulators, and fundamental building blocks in order for this process to work properly. If you're not getting enough copper, your collagen is gonna be made, but it's not gonna be strong enough. Whereas if you're not getting enough vitamin C, your collagen isn't even going to be made. And so the fundamental takeaway of this slide is that you know, the collagen synthesis is the same for each layer of your body, but how that collagen is actually used in each layer requires another layer of nutrient nutritional requirements in order to have that collagen adapt to the structure and function. You know, you've got the same collagen protein in your knee cartilage as you do in your uh, bone structure, but the way that these other supportive nutrients uh, interact with that collagen molecule determine how effective that collagen uh, structure is in supporting your ability to move around and move through life without pain um, and, and in an optimized way. Thank you, Dietrich. That was fantastic. I think that it is a key to emphasize exactly that collagen in itself is very valuable, but it needs help to be kept healthy and strong. And you've made a valid point. Vitamin C is essential for collagen to be made. Copper, for example, is a one of many, is just a mineral that exactly allows you to strengthen the collagen. And then something like sugar, on the other hand, is going to weaken the collagen. And that portion of the equation, we're going to actually elaborate on the more in-depth uh, classes, because again, this is not to uh, distract our main message and to keep you really, in a way, also focused on the key points and not to overwhelm you with the science. And for that also purpose, we decided to actually share with you a one powerful collagen smoothie, one of many that we have created already, and some of them will be shared by you with by email, but uh, specific recipes and handouts will be definitely a more in-depth address again in the other classes. But for now, enjoy the short video that is showing you how simply you can make a powerful collagen smoothie that is going to support every layer of your body. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I love how my team is very specific, detail oriented when they create uh, any recipes. And you can see based on what Dietrich shared with um, us that certain ingredients like vitamin C, for example, copper need to be part of the equation when you wanna strengthen your collagen. That's why in this recipe, you will see orange grapefruit and cooked beets to deliver the additional cofactors. Um, and of course, you can utilize different vegetables and different fruits. The one thing I want to emphasize, be careful on the sugar content, because before I shared with you this recipe, I've mentioned that sugar actually weakens the links in between, um, the enzymatic links in between collagen to, and it weakens your connective tissue strength overall. So there is also a specific amount of fruits that we are using to really deliver the specific amount of vitamins and minerals that we are addressing. So it's not just whatever comes and whatever is available, it's really thoughtful how we are putting our ingredients together. And also in this moment, I want to just take an opportunity and mention if you utilize any collagen or even gelatin 
in your meals or smoothies, just remember all the, of those additional ingredients to add it because the white powder of hydrolyzed collagen, for example, in itself is not going to be as good when combined with other ingredients. And like I said, being the owner of a supplement company, we've learned through doing our research and how we were formulating our ingredients that those cofactors and vitamins are very important. That's why Resync Collagen Blend contains all of them. So you can, you have the flexibility and freedom to skip, for example, the orange grapefruit and beets if you want to, and just mix the recent collagen with unsweetened almond, coconut, or hemp uh, seed milk, and just enjoy it. It is technically well done, ready to go. But again, if you have any other collagen that doesn't contain the cofactors and additional valuable ingredients, then you need to take additional uh, vegetables and fruits into consideration. Okay, so let's move forward. Excellent. All right. So as promised, here's the deep dive into collagen protein. We're going to take a look at the scientific literature on the effect of collagen supplementation on injury prevention, injury healing, exercise recovery, and more. You know, as Barbara and I have made abundantly clear, we've been researching this for years. And so it is my pleasure to uh, provide this information because there's so much misinformation out on the internet, people that just don't understand the research studies or haven't taken the time to look them up. And I am, I have a strong belief that if you were to take a objective look at the existing scientific literature, you'll see that there are a number of reasons that people should consider taking a collagen supplement. So, you know, from social media, you're probably familiar about this debate, but what we want to show you here is that there are so many people, people with different diseases, different activity levels, different nutritional needs um, that can benefit from a collagen supplement. And, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, a social media influencer saying, yes, this, this worked great. I'm talking about high quality clinical trials that involve hundreds of people with rigorous scientifically validated methods. So let's start with, you know, who is, who needs or who might need more collagen? Um, for me, the first that come to mind are older adults. And that's because of the natural gradual loss in collagen over one's life. So take a look at this um, graph right here. What we've got are on the x-axis age going from, you know, early age to later age and on, um, both of the y-axis is we've got two different measures of collagen density. In the blue, we've got the bone density measured by hydroxyapeptide. And then in the red, we've got the uh, percentage of collagen as a total of total protein in the skin. And so what this is showing is starting in the 20s or the 30s, the average person's collagen content starts to decrease and it continues to decrease throughout life. And not only do we see this in the most superficial layer in the skin, but we see it in the most, the deepest internal structure of your body, your bones, which are, as I'll remind you, 90% uh, of that hydroxyapeptide is made of collagen. And you, so, so we see here that, you know, age, which, you know, is associated with so many things that we want to try to avoid. So many of those things that we're trying to avoid have to do with the collagen content of our different tissues. Decreased bone mineral density, stiffer and weaker collagen, increased risk for injury, uh, decreased lubricating proteins, and decreased skin thickness and moisture. All of these relate to the amount of collagen content in those tissues. So, Additionally, outside of age, how much collagen you may need depends on what else you're eating. So in here, we're going to talk about kind of the metabolic reasons why somebody may need more collagen. If you recall, uh, some of the most important amino acids that go into the fundamental building blocks of collagen are glycine, proline, and arginine. Now, glycine and arginine are both non-essential amino acids, yet some people and especially people in certain conditions do actually need to take these from their diet. To illustrate this, let's take glycine. 
Um, glycine is one of the smallest amino acids and it's, it makes up about a third of your entire collagen protein. And what uh, this elegant study by Melendez Hevia has concluded is that the amount of glycine available from synthesis equaling about three grams per day, together with what is available from your diet, which ranges from 1.5 to three grams per day, may fall significantly short of the amount that you need for all of the metabolic uses for glycine, including collagen synthesis. And it falls short by about 10 grams per day for the average size human. So what this is saying is that that initial step of making the collagen from glycine is a bottleneck in your ability to make enough collagen to support your needs. Additionally, proline, I think it's making up about 12 or 15% of your, your collagen may also be a bottleneck, especially when healing from injuries. So when a person is injured, they can take a proline supplement, but that doesn't actually increase their collagen synthesis. Instead, what's been shown to work is the use of arginine supplementation, which is also very high in a collagen protein to help rectify that bottleneck, that limiting step in your ability to create new collagen after you get an injury. The next thing um, regarding you know, how what you eat determines how much collagen you need to consume goes into the use of whey and animal products and their ability to lower your glycine levels due to their high methionine level. We're not gonna get into the complicated regulation of this step, but essentially uh, methionine depletes the amount of glycine available to create collagen. We'll take a look in the next slide um, after we talk about the last group of people, which are uh, vegetarians. What we've seen in anecdotes from coaches, from case studies, is that when you look at the benefits that somebody who eats an omnivorous diet and the benefits of a collagen supplement for somebody who's eating a vegetarian diet, those vegetarians who seem to benefit from collagen seem to benefit a lot more from collagen than those on an omnivorous diet. And this is unique because vegetarians actually on average consume plenty of glycine, but they don't actually consume any of the, those preformed peptides, those amino acids that are joined together and preformed. There's no vegetarian source of those. And we think that that is one reason why vegetarians have so much potential to gain from taking a collagen supplement. So let's, in the next slide, let's dive into, you know, why whey and animal products are depleting that glycine. So this is a recent study published by Alcock and Shaw, some of the leading researchers in um, protein supplementation and, and how that affects uh, physical performance. And we've got two graphs here. One is showing proline and the other is showing glycine levels in the blood over the course of uh, three hours. So what happened in this study is that um, people were given um, one of these different protein supplements. We've got bone broth, liquid collagen, gelita, which is a type of collagen, um, and gelatin. These are all different protein sources of collagen protein. And then it's comparing um, those protein sources to what are commonly known as whey protein or calcium caseinate, aka whey protein salts or hydrolyzed casein. And those are in the blue and the green. So what we see is um, even though whey protein provides glycine and provides proline, on the left graph, you see that these proteins provide proline. And so you see a natural rise in proline in the blood and, and a natural decline as that gets used up. Now, when you look over at the glycine side of things, even though whey protein provides glycine, you don't see any bump in the blood levels. So what this shows very clearly is that whey protein, due to its high methionine content, depletes your collagen levels. And so I just have to point out that, you know, so many people are taking whey protein as a post-workout recovery shake or a, or a muscle building shake because of its branch chain amino acids and its high levels of lysine. These have an anabolic stimulus. But what they don't understand is that maintaining a healthy body has more to do than just strong muscles. You need strong connective tissue as well because what is actually holding the load of a, of a barbell or if you're say picking up a child or your grandkid, 
what's actually allowing you to support that weight, it's your connective tissue. And so if you're just taking a whey protein, you may actually be doing more harm for your connective tissues than good. All right, so in the next slide, this is what we really wanna illustrate here is how a collagen supplement allows people to get back to their maximum performance sooner with less pain. Oftentimes you'll hear the saying, more pain, more gain. I think this study flies in the face of that and I'll show you why. So essentially, this study, which, which actually uses the same collagen used in Resync's collagen blend, it's called Peptan, uh, was it's just about the best quality study possible. It was double blind, randomized, placebo controlled trial. It was led by uh, this researcher, Tom Clifford, who's another leading figure in uh, sports science. And essentially 24 young men were given two doses, 10 grams of collagen a day or a placebo for one week. After that week of taking a collagen supplement, uh, participants were instructed to do a, a workout session. And this workout session was consisting of 150 drop jumps. So if you've ever done these drop jumps, you'll know that it's an intense exercise. It causes significant amount of muscle damage and it results in major gains once you recover from being so sore. I don't know if you've ever done 150 drop jumps, but it is not pleasant. So let's look at what the collagen supplement did for these people uh, in terms of their performance and in terms of their muscle soreness. So you see at baseline, before they were ever taking their collagen supplement, this is where things are standardized to. Before the exercise, those taking the placebo and those taking the collagen were just about the same. And then when asked to jump as high as they can, that's the counter movement jump height, Post-exercise, there wasn't much difference, but you see one day and two days after 150 drop jumps, those taking the collagen supplement were able to get back to performing at their maximum level at a much faster rate than those taking the placebo. You see two days after that exercise, those taking the placebo still had that delayed onset muscle soreness that was preventing them from being able to perform at their max. Whereas those taking the collagen supplement were able to get that much closer to performing. So this is validated when we look at the muscle soreness or the pain scale. So uh, before taking the supplement and right before doing the exercise, we see that pain scales were just about the same among those taking the placebo and those taking the collagen. And you see right after the exercise, people who were taking the collagen supplement had about 20% less pain than those taking the placebo. That alone is enough to convince me. But when we look one day afterwards and two days afterwards, you see that those taking the collagen supplement, it was more than just 20%. It was something like 35 or 40% less pain than those taking the placebo. And so, you know, what this illustrates is that, you know, if you've got an extremely high level of activity, you've got an extremely high level of collagen turnover and that has to be replenished through your nutrition. If you don't replenish it through your nutrition, your body may be able to make that up, but it takes longer, it takes more resources, and we don't know the long-term lifelong effects of those, kinds of, um, of those kinds of issues. And so these results point to a new paradigm. Whereas in the past, we may have said more pain, more gain, what I want you to be saying now is better recovery, better performance. If I'm taking a collagen supplement and I'm able to get back to you know, performing at my maximum level while you are still you know, hardly able to sit in a chair, you're so sore, then who's on track to living a life with less pain of winning the next competition or of just going through life feeling embodied and empowered by a body that is supported nutritionally. So by extension, in the next slide, we're gonna go layer by layer, taking a look at the uh, scientific literature that, show, that confirms what we've seen in the exercise recovery and pain literature. So let's start with your deepest internal structure, bones. There is a study by Koenig in 2018 that showed that five grams a day, five grams of hydrolyzed collagen per day for one year was able to increase bone mineral density. Going to the next layer is your cartilage, so commonly known as your joints. 
10 grams per day for six months has been shown to reduce chronic knee pain in athletic students. Five grams a day for three months is able to reduce activity related joint pain in athletes. And then we also see the beneficial effects on arthritis, on these chronic degenerative diseases. This uh, meta-analysis by Garcia Coronado includes a dozen studies that show collagen can be useful for alleviating arthritis-induced joint pain. The next layer out are your ligaments, what are connecting your bones to your other bones. And we see again that five grams a day of collagen for six months is able to increase foot and ankle stability and mobility by 20%. One more layer out, we've got your tendons. In a, a population of college athletes, 2.5 grams a day for six months was able to reduce pain in people with Achilles tendinopathy. Even though your muscles only contain 6% collagen, taking a collagen protein supplement is enough to improve muscle mass and strength when combined with resistance training. And we see this in older adults, we see this in premenopausal women, and we see this in young healthy adults. So then this final layer of your body, the skin, the most superficial layer, there's been a meta-analysis by Choi and their team reviewing dozens of studies that show collagen is able to improve skin thickness, it's able to improve skin moisture, it's able to reduce the appearance of wrinkles, reduce cellulite, and it speeds up wound healing. So what we see from this is that supplementing with 2.5 to 20 grams, as evidenced in the literature, has been shown to decrease joint pain, improve mobility, accelerate healing, prevent injury, and promote total connective tissue health from your skin all the way through every layer to your bones. So in this uh, next slide, we wanna take a moment to talk about the interaction between vitamin C and collagen, since it seems like we have a little bit of time here. Collagen is able to sy synergize with vitamin C for better absorption and better utilization. And then vitamin C itself is able to improve healing. Um, from the graph here, we see that um, three different treatments, um, three of which involve gelatin or collagen, um, and all of them are involving vitamin C, we see that just because vitamin C is important for healing, it's not, it is insufficient to actually promote that healing without the stimulus of that collagen protein. Um, for the sake of time, I don't think we'll get too much into the details of vitamin C. If you are interested in that, be sure to check out our full course. But we want to leave you today with the main takeaways. What are the, uh, what are the takeaways that you can uh, get from this class? And from the uses to the dose, the timing, and the type of collagen, I want to boil this down to something that you can just take home and use today to improve your health. So collagen, as you've seen, has been shown in scientific literature to manage conditions in every layer of your body. It can accelerate healing and recovery, prevent injury, reduce pain, improve performance. And all of these together show that it is a viable and valuable supplement to consider adding to your daily intake. When it comes to dose, we see in the research, uh, the dose depends on how soon you want to see results. We saw there was one study with 2.5 uh, grams for six months. And if you want to wait six months, that's fine. But we recommend, and it's been validated in the literature, to get five to 20 or maybe even more grams of collagen per day in order to see, in order to accelerate the results that you want to see there. It's best taken with vitamin C in order for it to be absorbed and utilized properly. And it's also best taken with other supportive nutrients. These other nutrients synergize with collagen to allow it to function optimally. Things like copper, things like plant-based nitrates with, which increase the oxygenation and, um, and other nutrients of that sort can all go into helping that collagen function optimally. When it comes to timing, we've seen studies that show collagen can be useful before it can be useful during, and it can be useful after an activity. It just depends on how you want um, to see the benefits. If you are going for endurance, being able to take a collagen supplement during your activity. If you're going for 
um, recovery, taking it before and taking it after as seen in, in that uh, peptan study that we covered. Other great times that we've seen people use it at night before sleep, something we didn't get into in this webinar whatsoever is the beneficial effect of glycine on your, um, on your sleep. Numerous studies have shown glycine downregulates the excitatory hormones that keep you up at night. Uh, and once again, collagen contains about one third glycine. I wanna mention that if you're taking collagen after a fast, say in the morning, we recommend taking it with food. You don't want your body to catabolize that collagen and use it for calories. You want, you know, you want your body to use the food you eat for the calories and then use this collagen um, in order to, you know, shuttle it to the tissues that need it most in order for it to work effectively. And then once again, I have to reiterate, if you're taking away protein, please, and I hope the, the research continues to uh, be disseminated and be spread out there. Please also take collagen with a whey protein. We just don't know the long-term effects of that unique glycine depleting effect. When it comes to type, hydrolyzed collagen is best. Uh, it's better absorbed and it has less risks for um, gastrointestinal side effects. Then you know your source is important and, and quality certification is critical. Barbara, as a, you know, as the CEO of a supplement company is deep in the weeds of what different supplement certifications mean. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that the Resync collagen is held to the very highest of standards after witnessing how many protein supplements hold themselves to subpar standards. I appreciate all of it, uh, Dietrich, the uses, the timing, dose and type, super important uh, takeaways. And also let's, in this moment, I will just uh, take a second to mention, of course you can take a gelatin, of course you can make a bone broth that contains of, you know, weird maybe organs or things that you wouldn't eat on a daily basis, like chicken feet, you wouldn't probably eat chicken neck, you wouldn't eat most likely the cartilage of different bones, uh, the bone marrow of either pig, beef or, uh, you know, bison. I make bone broths at home. We actually provide you fantastic uh, recipes if you are interested in making your own broth because it's a one way to deliver healthy collagen into your diet by even having a few cups of bone broth, maybe with exactly antioxidant, other components and vegetables in it to make sure that everything that you need to synthesize and make collagen is in it. But it's a maybe not an easy way, time consuming to make it. But once it's made, you really have like a, almost gallons of the bone broth that you can drink throughout the entire week. So I want to make sure, as I mentioned in the beginning, we will be very uh, objective here and will provide you significant data um, based on science, what you can do to really keep your body uh, to the highest standard and to the best health. And collagen supplement is an easy way, but it may not work for everyone. So I just want to mention that. Um, and then moving forward, I want to make sure that you know, it's very clear. I think Dietrich and myself made uh, presented strong evidence that incorporating collagen, especially amino acids into your diet would be extremely beneficial. But what we also shared with you is the fact that collagen in itself and the amino acids are not almost good enough for the collagen to be made, maintain its strength as you move forward, as you age, or as you perform your athletic uh, moves on a regular basis and can degenerate your connective tissue. So what you need are the additional ingredients. And what I would like to make sure to share with you that we do have a further, more in-depth courses prepared for anyone who is interested. Some of the courses will actually uh, contain continuing of education uh, credits for registered dietitians and for chiropractors, but you don't need to be a registered dietitian chiropractor. Just the value of the information that we are going to present you in the four different part course is so fantastic that 
chiropractic and registered dietitian actually, um, I would say, high standard organizations allow the professionals to get continuing of education with this material. And I want to make sure you understand how it's breaking down. We are actually going to elaborate a little bit further on this nutrition connective tissue full course where collagen and uh, cofactors will be discussed in more depth than today. Then we will go into the heart skeleton, which I mentioned to you in one of the slides that for the purpose of this conversation, we are considering bone and cartilage, your heart skeleton. And then another class will be solely about the soft skeleton, everything that goes into keeping your tendons, ligaments, fascia, and muscles healthy, because there is more into it than collagen. And then last, but definitely not least, the most superficial layer that sometimes tell the story about our nutrition. When somebody looks at us and can say, if our skin hydrated, it's our skin dull, it's our skin you know, with acne, and it's all correlated to what's happening underneath the other layers of the skin, and especially what happens in our gut. And that will be the fourth part of the full course that we have prepared for you and we of course would love you to participate in it and take the courses regardless if you're a health professional or not the courses will be really nicely presented for anyone to digest the information especially for athletes and parents of those uh, young athletes that want to go to college and gained a full scholarship. And do you know what? There is the small percentage, but it exists for those who are very athletic gifted. And in this stage, I truly believe where science is, athleticism is fantastic and will get you to a certain level, but what you do physically, nutritionally and emotionally will take you to completely different levels. So don't ever underestimate what you eat, but actually do the opposite. Pay attention from the beginning of how you support your connective tissue health. And that's why we've created really uh, those courses to help you understand the basis and the more complicated things that are just not discussed by the Google doctor, I would say. That really takes and took us a lot of research, a lot of time to put the information together. So for now, because we're almost 50 minutes into it, I would like to address with Dietrich some frequently asked questions that previously we got from people. And do you know if you are open to additional questions that there are different that those that we're presenting with you, please ask. But I want to make sure that within an hour, as I promised, we will be done. So the question typically that is being asked and was asked is collagen um, is not a quality protein. So should we focus on a better protein sources? I feel like Dietrich, you've elaborated on it quite a lot that the whey protein in itself, especially post-workout, if you want to take care of your uh, connective tissue health, it would be wise to mix the whey protein with collagen to gain the full amino acid spectrum to not just support your muscles and not to deplete the glycine that actually tendons are 40% made of glycine. So you do want to have the collagen protein. And if you choose to add additional plant protein, um, you can also do that. But remember, um, that's something we address in our further courses, how much and what do you need to eat if you are a plant-based eater uh, versus a vegetarian or a meat eater. Dietrich, would you like to add anything into that? Yeah. And just going off of plant-based proteins, I can't help but mention the consumer labs report that showed that plant-based proteins are so much more likely to have contamination with heavy metals, oh, yes. like arsenic, cadmium, and things like that. So I don't want to scare anybody away from taking a protein supplement, but do be sure to check those certifications. Uh, those quality certifications are important for that reason. But yeah, I mean, um, I hear this all the time that collagen doesn't provide all of the essential amino acids. It's uh, missing tryptophan. And so, you know, yes, that means you cannot survive on only collagen. But what the research has shown in the past, you know, 10 and 20 years is that there's a lot more nuance to the discussion than just getting your essential amino acids. 
There's so many conditionally essential amino acids that you do need more of if you've been injured or if you are aging or if you have some sort of metabolic demand for it. And so even though collagen doesn't have um, a uh, optimal PDCAAS score, um, it still is comparable in terms of muscle protein synthesis uh, in head-to-head -head trials. And one study by uh, Christina Paul in 2019 showed that one third of your baseline protein intake can be collagen amino acids without depleting those essential amino acids. And this shows that it is it's not an either or kind of situation, it's a both and. In what cases do you need collagen and how much do you need? You can get at least one third of your protein intake from collagen without posing any sort of risk. Yeah, very valuable addition there. Um, and I wanna make sure that you know, few of the questions were addressed very well throughout this um, uh, lecture. And the, the one that maybe wasn't because we gave a spectrum from two and a half to 20 grams of collagen, right? And the typically asked question, and we've got this before, is, is there too much of, could it be possible to overdose in a way with collagen? Is there such a thing as too much collagen, right? And I think you would agree with me, Dietrich, that you know, everything has its own balance. And there is also the fact that collagen is pretty new into a science in a way, looking at different superfoods that are being tested and have been tested for way, way longer than collagen. We should base our statements of what we know, what we think, or what we feel. And in this case, I would say, you know, staying in the between the two and a half to 20 grams per dose, it's a very safe place, especially that that's what science shows us. And we've uh, explained and actually um, gave you several cases that really support that amount. But I also have to say, again, bringing myself as a former athlete, coach who work with professional athletes, and now a creator of supplements, we know that the professional athletes who consume Resync take our product before to support connective tissue health, and also after, like we said, the glycine depletion in the muscle is huge, and also other connective tissues are massively made of the amino acid glycine and also the collagen. I presented to you that every layer needs it. So therefore we're being told by the strength coaches or registered dietitians that athletes take a one scoop, particularly of resync before uh, one hour before the training and also immediately after the training. So the, what that equals to is 30 grams because resync has 15 grams of hydrolyzed collagen peptides with the vitamin C, copper, um, red spinach, beets, aronia, and other ingredients. So um, I think we do need to stay uh, truthful here to what science tells us. And I truly believe there are people that are going to experiment as we all do with ourselves and our boundaries, right? What we uh, can do versus what we should. And also we need to be very respectful of the fact that and acknowledge and appreciate that each one of us is different. And each one of us, depending on our background and our physicality, our age and our physical needs will need maybe more than someone who has a sedentary lifestyle. Would you agree with me, Dietrich? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Going back to that statement, if you have a high level of physical activity, then you're going to have a high level of collagen turnover. Being able to support that optimally is going to help your performance. It's going to help your recovery, and um, and it's going to help your long term health in terms of injury prevention. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And then when it comes to the collagen comparison with other protein supplements, we've mentioned that you know the um, initially when Dietrich went into what amino acids are needed for collagen to be made are different levels and there are four particular amino acids that are very high and are the highest in collagen. Did you, do you want to dive a little bit more into that for a second? Um, yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, question three here, how collagen supplements compare yeah, to others? Yeah, it's just really just specifically about the four amino acids that are, uh, you know, really having a higher level in collagen, hydrolyzed collagen than any other uh, 
you know, protein, especially yeah. whey protein. Definitely. Yeah. So first off, the, the one that I uh, mentioned always first is that collagen provides those preformed peptides, those three amino acids that are joined together that you literally cannot get anywhere else. And those are uh, hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. And these, uh, we, we won't get into the details of what it does, but it essentially allows the structure of collagen to, to exist. Without those amino acids, it just wouldn't work right. And so besides those two, hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine, collagen is also providing exceptional levels of glycine. There is no protein that I'm aware of that provides a, a higher dose of glycine. I think uh, many other protein sources, you need to take 10 times as much in order to get that level of glycine. And then there's the, the other minor amino acids, things like proline, things like lysine, things like arginine, which have all of these uh, really important effects individually. And then when you combine them all together, they synergize to create that anti-inflammatory stimulus that allows you to build up that collagen. So those peptides, those hydroxyproline, hydroxylysine, combined with the, the signaling properties of arginine and uh, glycine, all together, these show that the collagen is a superior protein when it comes to building your collagen tissues. Yes, very, very well stated. And then when we look at the you know fourth question, do I have to take a vitamin C uh, and collagen at the same time? I think we've made a very strong case that that is exactly essential, that it has to uh, be done. And we showed several sl uh, slides where we spoke about the cofactors, supportive nutrients where vitamin C played enormous role among the iron, copper, vitamin C, zinc, and manganese, right? And there was a one slide where Dietrich showed the difference when a vitamin C is taking in itself, what it can actually do to the body and what collagen with vitamin C is showing to do for the connective tissue health. So then, you know what, is there a difference between the different sources of collagen? Yes, there is. I think that it's a very good question that I'm being asked quite frequently because the collagen uh, sources of chicken, for example, is going to provide especially chicken cartilage, like the chicken feet and chicken neck, that's where a collagen from chicken is usually taken from, it's going to provide you with type 2 collagen that is going to support the cartilage health. Whereas a source of beef, bison, or pork is going to, or fish, the same thing, it's going to provide you with the type 1, and very often type 1 is binded with collagen type 3. And as we showed that on the one of the initial slides, every layer of the body is made of collagen, but there are also different parts and 90% of the entire collagen and co I would say connective tissue system really needs collagen type one, especially, but that's the soft skeleton, right? But then when you look at the heart skeleton, which connective tissue is made of, the bones and cartilage, then you have to look also at the type two, not only the type one. So essentially you do need to gain collagen type one, two, and three from your diet or from the supplementation uh, because there is an actually a difference. What parts and what uh, collagen sources, different layers of the body really need. Do you need to add or want to add something, Dietrich, here? No, the only thing I'd add is how excited I am for the really elegant research studies that are being conducted right now on exactly this, the differences between different types of collagen. So uh, in the coming years, we'll see a lot more data, and I'm, I'm very excited for that. Yeah, me too, because, you know, there is, we know from Germany that there is actually some contradiction and the scientists are saying that it's not the almost, uh, you know, type one, two or three, but how much of that particular source is being utilized. And it sounds like the scientists in Germany and different parts of Europe are focusing on that. So I'm really excited to see what this will show, because so far, let's mention this again, and maybe I will take the opportunity to say it right now, almost by the end of the class, that very 
if not most of the studies are done actually on a bovine collagen, maybe just because it's availability, but maybe also because um, there the difference between the collagen type one and three for bovine is different than from fish sources. And I also addressed in one of my actual YouTube videos, uh, really likable, and it seemed to engage a lot of questions was why I'm not a big fan maybe of a fish just because of what's happening with our uh, water contamination and the blue and green algae and how they impact different molecules that really can cause immune diseases. And unfortunately, supplement companies are not very rigoristic with the testing in itself, as we discussed this very briefly as well. That's why I'm very strict with how we test our ingredients and how our products are tested post-production because during production, there could be contamination. And the same is with collagen. Collagen that is being uh, made from bovine goes through really a lot of rigoristic, I would say, testing by specific, not all companies, I wanna say it, and not from all sources. That's why you have to be very careful who you buy it from, and does the company test the product post-production? Because we know this, cows, pigs, and animals all together on across the entire farms are treated differently by different people. And that's very important when then we are talking about extracting collagen from those animals, regardless from what parts of the body it comes from. So I wanna put this into that and the last but definitely not least, but it's always a fun question to address. Is there such a thing as vegan or vegetarian collagen? No, there is not. That's a very simple answer. I know it might be painful to say this to the vegan community. I'm a huge supporter of a vegan diet, but I also eat fish and I also make a bone broth. So I would say I'm not vegan, but I can say if you are eating all the cofactors if you're eating proper you know um balanced diet of vitamins minerals that's fantastic that will keep you definitely healthy but that doesn't mean that you are capable of producing collagen within your body district would you like to add something here yeah i i just have to stress i am you know 100 in the camp that a, a vegan and a vegetarian diet is going to be important moving forward for environmental reasons, for sustainability, for ethical reasons, and yet it's not suitable for everybody. You know, I can speak from um, clinical experience as well as from my own personal experience. And I think you as well, Barbara, I was a vegetarian for, for a decade and uh, ultimately I had to stop it because uh, the health effects just weren't positive for me. And so by incorporating sustainable grass-fed meats and collagen sources and optimizing, truly optimizing my diet, my health has transformed. And so even if there is no such thing as a vegan collagen protein, um, being able, being mindful of, of where you get your animal products can do a lot in terms of uh, promoting the sustainability of our industry moving forward. I agree. I couldn't agree more with you. Um, and listen, with that being said, I think Dietrich, we've done a fantastic job. And we thank everyone who has joined us. And if there are any additional questions, we are happy to take them now. So please write them in the chat box. Uh, we will be happy to address anything right now as we really just have few minutes because we went over one hour. I just want to be gracious and, you know, give the opportunity. Nonetheless, we address a lot. And I think that we've addressed also the typical questions that we are hearing from people. So I don't see anything in the box. And in that case, I just want to thank everyone who joined us here today for your time and for your almost curiosity in to learn more and to be able to support yourself 
and live healthier life. And I'm absolutely thanking you on behalf of entire racing team. And I, of course, look forward to serving you in the more elaborated uh, classes on connective tissue health. Dietrich, thank you so much for your assistance. You've been fantastic as always. It's my pleasure to have you here and have a wonderful rest of your day. Wonderful, you too, take care. Bye-bye.